Good evening and welcome back to our studies on Christian view of salvation. <clears throat> Today we are going to consider the concept of sanctification in biblical perspective. In the previous classes, by the grace of God, we have been able to handle repentance, justification, as well as assurance of salvation. But today, we are going to look into another part of the process of our salvation, which is the word sanctification. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14, Apostle Paul says, Follow peace with the all men and holiness with the, without which no man can see the Lord. So in, the, in a repentance, our attitude is changed, our mind is changed, and in regeneration, our nature is changed, in justification, our standing before God is changed. In adoption, our position is changed. But in sanctification, the Bible says our character is changed. This is a very important subject which is dealt in the Holy Bible in relation to our sanctification. Sanctification shows the fruit of a justified life. That means the Bible says sanctification is the outcome of the justified life of a believer. We need to be sanctified for our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ was sanctified. By His Father, our Savior, our Savior Lord Jesus Christ was sanctified by His Father, John 10, 36. John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 36, we read, <clears throat> Say of Him whom the Father hath sanctified, say of, say of Him whom the Father has sanctified. And uh, also the Bible says that He was sanctified Himself. Father God sanctified Him. And then Jesus said that He was sanctified Himself. John 10, uh, 79. And for their, for their sake, I sanctify Myself. Jesus in His intercessory prayer, He prays there that for their sake, I sanctify Myself. And then thirdly, we, by His people, the, Lo uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is sanctified by His people. Where we read it in First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. So in, in these three ways, that means by God the Father, by Himself, and by His people, the Lord Jesus Christ is sanctified. Sanctification is the will of God, the Bible says. In respect of the believer's life, the Bible says that sanctification is the will of God. In 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3, we read, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. The subject of holiness and sanctification mentioned more than 1066 times in the Holy Bible. That means 1066 times the words either sanctification or holiness is repeatedly spoken in the Holy Bible. The very number of its repetition, what we found in the, in the Holy Bible, gives its importance in regards to a person's life. Okay, let me first of all uh, tell you what is the meaning of sanctification. What is the meaning of sanctification? The Bible tells us sanctification is the work of the Holy Spirit of God. And sanctification and holiness are same in its essence. When we say uh, about holiness or sanctification, both are uh, same in its essence. But the bas basic meaning of sanctification is separation. When we re read about the word sanctification in the Bible, it talks about separation in our life. 
Psalm number 4 verse 3. Psalm number 4 verse 3. I will read it for you. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. Know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. And believers have been set apart by God for the Lord to use as he decides. The word sanctification very often we read in the Old Testament, especially in relation to tabernacle, in relation to the temple and the temple services and the priestly services of the high priest in the Old Testament and also of the people of Israel of their day-to-day -day life. In every area where we read about sanctification. And also the word sanctification is effective. The Bible meaning of sanctification is to be set apart. The word sanctification, the New Testament Greek word is hagia so which necessarily means set, placing apart or setting apart for a particular purpose. When we come to know or come to discuss about the word sanctification, we need to understand that we are being set apart or we have been separated by God for a particular purpose. And uh, we are separated or sanctified by God and sanctified from sin and sanctified unto a holy life. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 40. We have been sanctified by the Almighty God, sanctified from our sin and sanctified unto a holy life. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 21. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 21. Chapter 2 verse 21 we read, If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and made for the master's use and prepared unto every good works. So the Bible profoundly speaks about the importance of sanctification. So as we are, we are studying here about this subject, we need to cover up all the areas where the Holy Spirit of God has governed and spoken about this particular subject. However, for believers, it can be twofold meaning. In respect of the life of a believer, the word sanctification has a twofold meaning. Number one, it is separation from evil. Second Chronicles chapter 29 verses 5 to 15 and 18. Second Chronicles, Chronicles chapter 29 verses 5 to 15 and uh, uh, 18. Because of the laxity of time, I do not want to read all the portions uh, here at this platform. But uh, I request you to read as you listen to this message, the particular references which I have spoken now. And in relation to believers' life, it speaks about separation from evil and also separation unto God. Separation from evil and separation unto God. Okay, let me consider also the author of sanctification. Who is actually sanctifying a sinner? The Bible says the triune God has his part in the act of sanctification life of a sinner. All the three persons in the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit have got equal part in sanctifying a sinner and separating him unto the holy life. Number one, by God the Father. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 and 24. So very familiar words in the New Testament. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 and 24. Apostle Paul says, And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. Very God of peace sanctify you holy. And... Uh, I pray, God, that you are whole, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is one of the main uh, references we have in the New Testament where it says the God the Father sanctifies a sinner for the purpose of separating him unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And secondly, we also read in the Bible that not only God the Father sanctifies a sinner, but God the Son also sanctifies him. God the Son also sanctifies him. Where we read in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26, that when Apostle Paul was talking about the union between Christ and church, uh, typically speaking, uh, between the union between the husband and wife. So when he speaks about the relationship of the husband and wife, in a typical union, he listed that relationship to uh, project the ideology that how the Lord Jesus Christ is unified with his holy church. 
So when he says that in Ephesians 5.26, he says that he, that means Christ, might sanctify and cleanse it, that is his church, uh, his church, that is with the washing of water by the word. This is the washing of the water by the word. The Son of God has washed every sin it by the word of God and sanctified him so that he should become a child of God. And thirdly, uh, we have received the sanctification also from the third person of the Trinity, which is the Holy Spirit of God. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 we read, Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit. That means God has uh, chosen you from the beginning, uh, for beginning, uh, you, uh, chosen you to salvation through sanctification through the Spirit. So very, very, uh, very beautiful words. Also, thus we have the part and activity, act of the triune God in sanctifying a sinner unto the Lord Jesus, unto the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, God the Father has sanctified us, our both our body, soul, and spirit by the precious word of God, and the Son of God has sanctified us, and also it says, necessarily, the Spirit of God has sanctified us. So we have the part and act of the triune God in the act of sanctification of a sinner. And then thirdly, the means of sanctification, with what means the, the Lord Jesus Christ, or God, the Almighty God, sanctifies a sinner. The means of sanctification. There are five different means by which God sanctifies a believer and sanctifies a sinner. Number one, by the word of God. So why I systematically arrange here these things uh, in relation to this study that my I want my audience to uh, not only to listen it, but also they may be able to retain these things in their mind which I present to you right now. Number one, the means of sanctification. Number one is the word of God. It is through the word of God that you and I are being sanctified. John's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 17. The Lord Jesus Christ is in his mediatory, mediatory prayer, that is intercessory prayer. He prayed, sanctify them through thy truth. He was praying to God the Father, sanctify them through thy, through thy truth. And to be sanctified means spend much time with the word of God. In order, we, we as believers, we need to stand before, we, we need to spend time before the word of God so that the word of God might sanctify our day-to-day -day life. It, the word of God purifies us and cleanses us and, and, and set apart all the losses from the life of a believer. It is the word that reveals sin, the word of God that reveals sin. Whenever a believer hears the word of God, the Holy Spirit of God uh, act in the hearts of the believer and whereas as a result that the Spirit of God reveals sins to the mind of the believer. So therefore in the New Testament there are 21 different list of sins which are mentioned. Each of these sins are brought to the attention of the believer so that the believer may be able to get convinced about the sin in his life and then sanctify himself by the precious word of God. So the word of God is the first means by which a believer is sanctified. Number two, it is by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 12 we read, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. The Lord Jesus Christ suffered without the gate, means outside the city of Jerusalem, in order that he should sanctify us through his blood, by, by the blood which he has shed on the cross of Calvary on our behalf. The word reveals the sins of the life of a believer, and the blood cleanses it away. See, see, it, 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 the blood of Jesus Christ is doing just like the work of a mirror. As we stand in front of a mirror, the mirror reflects our uh, our uh, uh, posture or our our resemblance, and then accordingly we are being able to uh, spot out whether there is any any spot or blemishes on our body or faces. Accordingly, we can either wash our face or cleanse our face or then repair our faces by doing any, any, any artification. In the same way, the blood of Jesus Christ, what is the word of, word of God, reveals our sins. As we are standing or sitting before the word of God 
and re reading it and meditating it upon, or when we hear about the word of God, the word of God is actually revealing our inner sins to us, and then what will happen? Subsequently, we are we are able to cleanse it, cleanse it by the blood of Jesus Christ. So the absolute result is therefore sanctification. The word of God and the blood of God, blood of Christ both sanctifies us, and then we become holy people separated under God. So the first means of sanctification is the is the word of God, and second is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And thirdly, by chastisement. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 10 and 11, the Apostle Paul says, For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness. He speaks about the various punishment and chastisement a father gives his son. In the same way, the, the physical fathers, they used to chasten their children only for a while, only for a few times, uh, and it is for a temporary period. But the Heavenly Father, He chastens us in order that He might purify our life. So, uh, when the Lord Jesus Christ is chastening the believer against the sins that He commits, then what happens? He purifies the believer and separates him and makes him profitable to the Lord Jesus Christ. And fourthly, by yielding to God. The Bible says that the fourth means of sanctification is one surrender to the word of God and one, sur one surrender to the, the Son of God. So by yielding to God, we have to, we are called that we are called, we are called because we need to surrender our lives to the Almighty God. Romans 6, 19. Iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness, righteousness and holiness. That means we were once with our various members of the body, we had submitted our members to the iniquities unto iniquities. That means we have been indulged in so many iniquities with the members of our body prior to our conversion and prior to our salvation. Now Apostle Paul says, as you are born again believer, and uh, the Holy Spirit of God has regenerated you and made you a new man in Christ Jesus and sanctified you and separated you unto a holy life. The Paul says there, use your, the members of your body as servants to righteousness and to holiness. That is what the Lord has called us. And fifthly, the Bible says in Second Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1, by ourselves, so by means of the word of God, by the blood of Christ, and by chastisement of the Heavenly Father, and then yielding ourselves to the word of God and the Son of God, and then finally by ourselves. Having therefore these promises clearly, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God. It's a very important verse in the Bible. Second Corinthians chapter 7, 1, where Paul is making some comparison to believer with other things. That means Christ with the Baal and the temple with the idol, believer with the unrighteous, uh, unrighteous acts of a person. Then he finally says, separate ye, uh, separate ye yourselves from among them. Then I'll, I shall be your father and he shall be unto me the sons and daughters. So he says there in verse number chapter 7 verse 1, having therefore these promises, which promises, all the promises which God has given to us or set, us, set for us in chapter 6 of Romans, after we have been unified with the Lord Jesus Christ into one union. That means we have been, uh, we, we have been, we, we have been dead with the Lord Jesus Christ, we have been buried with the Lord Jesus Christ, we have been resurrected with the Lord Jesus Christ, and as a result we have been identified ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and became one with the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore he says, having therefore these promises, Dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting our holiness in the fear of God. So we have fivefold means for our sanctification. Number one is the word of God. Second one, second one is the blood of Christ. And the third one is the chastisement of the Heavenly Father. And the fourth one is our voluntary submission to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then finally, by ourselves. Okay, let me go to the other topic now in relation to the one, the fourth point, that is the time of sanctification. Many people, they used to ask me the question that 
about the time of the sanctification. At what time a sinner is sanctified? Is it just at his conversion or prior to his, prior to his salvation or dependence or after his regeneration? Which is the exact time in which a sinner is sanctified in front of God? There are great uh, diversities of opinion in relation to the time aspect of the sanctification is effected in the life of a sinner. But uh, I understand uh, it in a very three different ways. Number one, instantaneous with our conversion. That means whenever a sinner comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, stands in front of, in front of him, uh, confessing his sin to the Lord Jesus, acknowledging that Christ died and died, buried and rose again on his behalf, and prepared for his, prepared his salvation by his sacrificial death. And when he acknowledges that grace and confesses his sin to the Lord Jesus Christ, instantaneously he is being satisfied. He is satisfied. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11. But such were some of you. Paul, Paul was listing out here certain serious grave sins of the people in Corinth. And he says some of you were also of the same category. That means, but, but such were some of you. That means all the sins which Paul mentions there in chapter 6, uh, for, uh, one after the other, Paul says, but such were some of you. That means those of the, those of those some of some of those believers who are now the members of the congregation at Corinth, and they were also were such people. But uh, ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord. That means ye are washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and you are sanctified by our Lord Jesus Christ. That means separated by our Lord Jesus Christ, unto holiness, and but are justified in the name of the Lord. What a profound verse is that. So it speaks of sanctification as a past experience with a washing and justification. So when a, a sinner receives the Lord Jesus Christ, at the same time, mystically or spiritually, the Holy Spirit of God washes him with the precious blood of Jesus Christ and then cleanses his sin. And then... He is therefore put on justification. That means the Lord has put on or imputed him his righteousness which he has wrought about on the cross of Calvary by his sacrificial death. Now, as the sinner stands before God being imputed the righteousness of Christ, God the Father sees him as a guiltless person and then pronounces him to be justified. That is what when I handled the subject of justification, I said, Justification is a judicial act of God by which God pronounces a guilty sinner, guiltless and a, and a sin, uh, righteous before the throne of God on the basis of his personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrificial death on the cross, of, cross on his behalf. So therefore, instantaneous with the conversion. The sanctification takes place instantaneous with the conversion. If you listen me to uh, those who listen me this evening, I tell you that the way if you are not uh, not yet been saved and uh, you are still living in your sins, the very moment that you open your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and accept Him into your heart, what happened? You are instantaneously uh, uh, sanctified. And secondly, the sanctification is also progressive, not only instantaneous, but it is also progressive. James chapter. 1 verse 22 to 25, where the illustration of a man who looks in the mirror is given. When a, a man stands in front of a mirror and then looks himself in the mirror and sees himself in the mirror and seeing a spot of dirt goes and washes it away. Everybody, every one of us, we use a mirror on every days. When we want to go out, that we take, get into the, the bathroom and have a wash of our body, then we come immediately and stand in front of a mirror and then we try to detect any spot of dirt or, dirt or anything as such in our face or bodies that the, the mirror will resemble it, that then we will wash it away and then cleanse away ourselves and then we will neatly dress up and then goes out. So this is what the mirror does. The word of God also the same, uh, sanctification also doing the same. The mirror is the word of God. When we stand before the word of God or sit before the word of God, what will happen? The word of God will reveal our spot or dirt or sins and subsequently that we will confess it. Therefore, we will experience the washing or cleansing of the Spirit of God. So this is a progressive aspect. Every born-again believer was 
instantaneously sanctified the very moment that he received the Lord Jesus Christ and also he is experiencing a progressive sanctification in his day-to-day -day life. And this has to be experienced, the experience till the last breath of our life uh, as we live on this world. Because we are living in this physical world and also, also a body of a lot of infirmities and sin, uh, uh, sinfulness. So there is chances for us to have uh, spots and dirts in our uh, in our day to day life. So whenever the when we read the word of God, or hear the word of God, the spirit of God convinces us that there is spot with our life. Then we understand it or acknowledge it, and then we confess it, and then by the time we are being washed by the precious word of the Lord. And then the Holy Spirit of God is also, the Holy the Spirit of God does not reveal all our uh, un-Christ Christian likeness. That means we are not, we are not very much Christ-like uh, altogether in our life. Progressively we are uh, achieving to that end. See actually the Holy Spirit of God uh, does not reveal all of our un-Christian likeness at one time. So, it's, so he shows to us or she reveals to us part by part. That means that would be too discouraging uh, to a believer that the Holy Spirit of God is presenting and revealing all the unchristian likeness of a, the life of a believer. So he is uh, uh, showing to him or revealing him one after the other. So as we are getting convinced about one after the other of the spot or wrinkles or deaths in our lives that we are correcting ourselves with the word of God and thus the progressive sanctification is effected in one's life. And then finally, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, we read, Sanctify you holy under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means the our salvation has three steps, past, present, and future. That means we are saved as to our spirit, and we are being saved as to our soul, and then we will be saved as to our body, the final redemption. The same way our sanctification also has two, three steps. We are sanctified or we are being sanctified and we shall be sanctified in the future. And this is what we understand when we study about this concept in the biblical basis. And then Philippians, Paul in Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 to 14, he says, I was pressing on towards the future perfection. See, uh, he says uh, one thing I... I do, forgetting all those things which are behind. And uh, press, I press toward the mark for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That means, he says, he was pressing on toward the future perfection while daily perfecting his earthly progressive sanctification. This is mandate, mandatory to every born-again Christian believer. Number five, the main point I'm saying again, the reason for our sanctification, why should every believer to be sanctified in a progressive sense. John 17, 19, And for their sake, Jesus said, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified. Our Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ was a sinless person. Then in what respect that we may suspect that he needed sanctification on our behalf? But he says that if Jesus Christ needed to be sanctified, then I certainly need to be sanctified too. How could Jesus be sanctified? Because the Son of God be made more holy. We want to understand in what sense and to what extent the Son of God can be made more holy in his life. A possible answer is found in Romans chapter 15, verse 3. Romans chapter 15, verse 3 may be the possible answer to the question how the Son of God may be made more, more holy. The answer is for even Christ please not himself. The even Christ had not please, please not himself. Always uh, pressing for something better. Always pressing for something better. So now the final uh, approach, that is the result of sanctification. What are the results of sanctification? The, there are twofold results I have noticed in the Holy Bible as a result of sanctification. Number one, Perfection through Jesus Christ. Since we are sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the precious word of God, Bible says our perfection through Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 14. For by one offering he hath perfected 
forever them that are sanctified. Again, I will read that verse for by one offering he hath perfected uh, for ever them that are sanctified. And the second one is the fruit of holiness. Romans chapter 6 verse 22. Number one is perfection through Christ and second one is the fruit of holiness. Number Romans chapter 6 verse 22. But now being made free from sin and become servants of God. Paul says now being made free from sin and become servants of God you have your fruit unto holiness. See I tell you Every born again believer who is in the process of sanctification will definitely produce the fruit of holiness. And I'll tell you, you can examine yourselves and I can examine myself whether I am uh, experiencing the sanctification in my day to day life. The Bible says we are actually being sanctified by the grace of God, by the will of God, by the word of God and even by the Holy Spirit of God. So as a result, every Christian believer will be ready to produce the fruit of holiness. Fruit of holiness is the outcome of the sanctification that we have received in Jesus Christ. And finally, may I tell you how to retain this sanctification, sanctified walk in, our, walk in our life. Many people, they fail to retain the sanctified walk in their life. Uh, four major principles in the, the relation to that, number one, live a life of implicit obedience to the light given to you by the Holy Spirit. Live a, live a, live a, an implicit uh, obedience to the light given to you by the Holy Spirit. And number two, if you fall, immediately confess your sin to the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, uh, resist the devil and he will free from you, James chapter 4 verse 7 and number 4, be faithful in regular seasons of Bible reading, prayer and uh, witnessing and living for others. I am hopeful that uh, many of you will understand systematically what is the biblical concept of sanctification, what it meant to be and uh, what are its results and how a person may be able to retain the the sanctified walks in his life as well as the reason for sanctification and then the uh, time of sanctification, the means of sanctification, the order of sanctification, everything in a short and a sweet method by the grace of God I have presented in this platform right now and uh, this same study will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. You can subscribe it and freely listen to it whenever you have the time. I'm, I hope that this would dearly will help you in your continuous studies on this particular discipline. May God bless you and continue to pray for me also. Uh, thank you for joining with me this evening. May God's name be glorified now and evermore in His blessed service. Evangelist Titus from Yudhiyarmula. Thank you.